Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Crystal and this is my social thread. So today uh, my vlog is going to be all about my roundup of the month of February. So all of the makes that I have been, uh, that I have made in the month of February. So first and foremost, what I'm wearing, this is the Cheyenne um, Maternity Maxi Dress from Peekaboo Patterns. Um, I did a vlog on this uh, last month. Um, so it's a maternity dress with a um, nursing access panel, which is really, really great. If you want to know more about that, please have a look at my January roundup of the month um, and all the information will be on there. Sorry, I am out of breath. I am 30 weeks pregnant and it's just everything is a bit of a struggle at the moment. Uh, but there you go. So um, not in any particular order. I'm going to start with um, my most recent makes because I have not videoed, I've not vlogged on those yet. But the earlier makes I have done a Friday sews on. So for those of you that do follow me, um, the latter part of this video will be a bit of a repetition. I also have a tea here. Bear with me. Excellent. So let's begin. Um, <clears throat> what did I make? Uh, let's start with. Okay. <clears throat> My project for Jenny Stitches Fabrics, who I'm a brand ambassador to. Um, so this was for the month of... <clears throat> Would it have been February? I'm not sure now. Kind of out of sync with the months. <clears throat> but basically, I made the Nina Lee South Bag sweater, which is this pattern over here. So it's a fairly simple pattern, a knit sweatshirt pattern. Um, the variations are cropped jumper, um, sort of a normal length jumper and a sweater or jumper dress. Um, it has drop shoulders. It has a funnel neck, long sleeves, cuffs, and a cuff at the bottom as well. <clears throat> this goes from a size... UK size 6 to a UK size 20. Measurements are 6, would be a bust of 32, waist of 24, all the way up to a size 20, which is a bust of 46, waist of 38. I went for the size... So normally I'd be a size 12, pre-pregnancy size, I would be a size 12, but I believe I went up a size... I went up two sizes, in fact. Um, I... <coughs> bear with me sorry I went up two sizes to a size 16 um, just to accommodate my um, larger bust and obviously my bump uh, but in hindsight now that I have made it I could have gone down to a size 14 uh, with the bump because it is quite roomy um, the version that I made was the I went for the full length version and I had to add 5.5 inches to mine because I quite like my dresses below the knee and this would probably be just above the knee um, if I was to make it straight out of the packet so that's the only um, amendments that I did and also you can add pockets to it um, but I found that um, where I added the pockets I don't know why it was a bit low it was quite low maybe I didn't actually follow the um the markings for where to actually place the pocket so it's quite low and also i find with knit um patterns or knit dresses when you have a pocket in it it tends to gape open so it kind of looks like a little kangaroo pouch on the side which isn't a very nice look <clears throat> so i literally just cut off the pockets and resurge the sides of it um, but actually, in hindsight now, this has actually worked out much better for me because um, pre -pre or post-pregnancy, I plan to just um, make the jumper uh, the jumper dress or the sweater dress smaller by um, overlocking all the sides. So it's actually fairly easy to do that um, because there's no pockets. So my version is this one here. Very simple um, sweatshirt, um, um, uh, sweatshirting fabric. This is a Jenny, sorry, if you can see the bobbling on there, I have literally worn this. So I think I've made, I've had this made now for about a month, maybe two, um, because it takes time for it to go onto Jenny's blog. And I can only release the information and the photos once it's up on her blog, uh, because I am obviously there to um, promote her, her business and her fabrics, that sort of thing. So this has been on um, sort of frequent rotation. As soon as it comes out of the wash, I wear it. It's so snugly and warm. It's basically their grey alpine fleece. Um, and I'll show you the inside. It's an actual sort of fleece back toweling and it's just so lovely, soft and comfy. Um, so these are the drop sleeves here. You can see the hanger sort of ends there. These are the drop shoulders I meant, sorry. And then you've got the sleeves, you've got the cuff and it's full length all the way down to the cuff at the bottom. 
um are, as a brand ambassador i get the pattern printed the fabric and all the notions free in return for a blog post and honest review and the blog post is currently on jenny's blog at the moment if you wanted to have a look um to read my review as well so i'll pop up some photos of myself wearing it And as I say, the only amendments I made was to the length. I just lengthened it and I removed the pockets. Uh, in hindsight, I could have gone down to a size 14, as I say. And pre-pregnancy, I would have been a size 12. So I would have gone down even further. Um, very straightforward to do. There was no top stitching required, which is fab. And so all of it was actually done on my overlocker, which sped things up even better. Um, <clears throat> and that's it, really. Nothing really to say. Um, very easy pattern to do. I suppose from start to finish cutting out and finishing the whole thing I'd say two to three hours which is actually quite a, I mean quite a short time for um, garment making so that's a really nice good cozy one for this time of year so that's uh, make number one make number two was my blog post uh, for Little Miss So-and-So. I'm also brand ambassador to Little Miss So-and-So and I get their all set to sew, so luxurious kits every month. And last month I chose the Ruby by Fiber Mood. It's this one here. So basically the special thing about all set to sew is it's 65 pounds, there's two tiers. So so luxurious is 65 pounds. And I think uh, the so special is 40 or 45 pounds. And you basically get a choice of a knit uh, pattern or a woven pattern. And then once you've chosen your pattern, you get a choice of all the luxury knit fabrics or, or all of the luxury woven uh, fabrics. So for Little Miss So-and-So, luxury includes Atelier Brunette, Art Gallery, Lady McElroy, Dashwood Studio studios um that sort of thing which is amazing and for the so luxurious box every a subscriber gets 3.5 meters of that fabric all the notions required for the pattern the printed pattern or the um, a0 printout and a lovely haberdashery gift as well that also includes postage and packaging which is amazing for 65 pounds so you definitely get more value than what you're paying for um because say for example art gallery 22 pounds a meter if you get three and a half meters of that that's more than 65 pounds already just for fabric alone which is really really great so i'm loving these boxes <laughs> and i look forward to the email every month so as i say last month i went for the knit pattern so this is the ruby by fiber mood and it is a oversized very similar actually to the south bank south bank sweater it's an oversized sweater dress again um, it also has drop shoulders. It's not that evident on this on this drawing, but it has drop shoulders, um, gathered sleeves and gathered cuffs, a neck band, a wrist cuff, and also um, there's no. It's just like a hem, and it's got mitered corners here with a side slit on either side. So this is very very oversized. Um, this is a European company, so measurements are in centimeters so it goes from an extra small bust of 76 hips of 86 centimeters all the way up to a triple xl which is a bust of 146 and hips of 145 now going on the measurements alone i should have been an xl but then i had a look at the i had a look at the um um finished garment measurements and i am actually a medium so i went down two sizes <clears throat> and i went for a straight medium um and it was I, I did it exactly as it was meant to be everything was done on the overlocker apart from the gathering stitches on the shoulder and the top stitching around the neckband oh and also the hem as well um was done on the normal sewing machine um relatively easy to do i wouldn't say it's the easiest because um there's some some bits to the pattern that are slightly odd um, although there are different ways of doing it if you wanted to do it the way you wanted to do it but i just followed the instructions so that i could give a full and frank review so the only thing i would say let me show you my version here so again this has been on full rotation really lovely cozy sweat uh, sweater dress so i went for a coral pink with black dots it's a um french terry uh, and this is by Poppy Fabrics. And I got three and a half meters of that. So there you go. You've got the black, um, the black ribbing for the neckband. It's top stitch there as well. Um, this is the drop shoulder from here to here. Then you've got gathers here at the, at the sleeve head. Um, and then you've got the cuff and the gathered cuff there. All the way to the bottom you have... Let me just show you. 
so it's um you've got the slit, side slit and then you've got sort of mitered corners there as well um so the only things about this pattern that i found a bit odd was, was that the sleeve for example um sorry i was just checking that it was recording so the sleeve piece for, for example so this is actually the sleeve it's quite a wide one because of all the gathers so at the bottom it's got the gathering marks where you're supposed to gather uh, put your gathering stitches in and then you're supposed to gather it into the cuff of your sleeve um but i found that so basically the gathering of the sleeve i'll show you what it so basically it asks you to gather if i can hold it from here it asks you to gather from this point to this point gather that into that area there and then the rest you're supposed to stretch it around so i suppose they intended for the gathering just to be at this part but because of the amount of fabric that was there i found it was very hard to gather to stretch out that last bit of fabric into the remainder of the cuff so i think ideally if i was to do it again i would literally just do um gathering stitches all the way gathering stitches all the way from that point to that point and then um gather it to fit the cuff so all the gathers are equal around the cuff rather than just being at that part there because the effect is the same anyway i think if you look at the cuff it looks like it's gathered all the way around anyway so if the effect is the same you might as well do it the same way as is normal as opposed to just having those gathering stitches there so that's the only thing that i found also i found with doing the um doing the the slit um it tells you nicely actually do i have the pattern here it tells you nicely that when you sew it down you're supposed to do it as such i'll show you a picture ah. so this is the um the side a split there you're supposed to um you know hem it mitered corner there go all the way up that way that way so this part here i did perfectly well but then when i got to this part i didn't have enough um seam allowance to anchor that bit down so i literally had to just triangulate my seam there which is a bit odd so i don't quite know what happened there like what i did wrong that i didn't have enough seam allowance there so i'll show you what i've done it's not the best but so as you can see it's um hemmed here then you go all the way up here beep, 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 beep. and then when you get to the slit don't know if you can see i've just triangulated it there because i didn't have enough fabric to do the proper squaring off which is fine i mean the effect is still the same um and it's got some lovely mitered corners very simple to do um but quite effective i think um and that's that one let me pop up some photos of that so now um i don't think this would be a pattern i would do again as is because i find that the um, combination of the lowered um, shoulder or the drop shoulder and the gathering puff at this part of your shoulder so sort of your bicep area isn't very flattering and I just don't really like that particular design and it kind of reminds me um, of a combination between two patterns so it reminds me of the south bank which is what I've, which is what I've just shown you so the south bank as um, you will recall have I still got it the south bank as you will recall has the drop shoulders and then the straight sleeves and then the other combination that I was thinking of was the Tilly and the Buttons um, Billy sweatshirt so the Tilly and the Buttons Billy sweatshirt doesn't have the drop shoulder it has a normal shoulder and then it has the puffy gathered sleeve uh, and I think that the combination of this drop shoulder and the gathered puffy sleeves is a bit too much so i'm hoping i mean i'm wearing it now as i say i literally as soon as it's out of the wash i i put it on because it's easy it's comfortable it fits my pump which is great and um, but what i plan to do post pregnancy is i am most likely going to chop it down into a sweater and then i am going to so my choices are to either adjust the shoulder um, bring the shoulder in to the normal shoulder where the normal shoulder should be so it's not a drop shoulder and then add a gathered sleeve or the easier option so like the Tilly and the Buttons sweatshirt or the easier option would be to remove this sleeve and just add a straight sleeve I could even um, open this sleeve up 
um, cut it out into a straight sleeve and reattach it similar to the South Bank sweater so that's probably an easier hack just to make it more wearable for me post-pregnancy and the reason I'm cutting it down into a sweater is because I will be breastfeeding so dresses without nursing access I probably wouldn't be wearing for the next year or so anyway but I think if I chop that down into a sweater that will be more wearable for me um, and that's what I plan to do and then I'll add um, some black ribbing to the bottom band as well for that so that's make number two I am tidying away as I go just because I don't want things to be um, um, get too, too messy for me and then the next item that I made uh, was um, were two sweatshirts for my um, husband and my son bear with me sorry I'll pop up the um, the pattern it's a daddy melian uh, pattern by it's an English it's a German company I think melian creatives or something I'll pop up a picture and the reason I went for this is because I love the chevron design and funnily enough there are no English uh, hoodie patterns with a chevron design so I couldn't I couldn't find it and so I've stuck to this one uh, the only thing you need to make a note of for this particular pattern is that you need to add seam allowances for the uh, between all the chevrons. So let me show you what I've made. This is my son's one. Can't hold it. So it's this one here. So it's the lovely chevrons. So this fabric is from Little Miss So and So, and it's fleece back sweatshirting. All in different colours. So this is the Aqua Royal, and I think it's the Forest Green. They have all lovely different colours, all with matching ribbing as well. Um, and I think it's only ten pounds a metre. And if you're a subscriber, you get ten percent off their whole website for the duration of your subscription, which is great. So as I say, with the chevrons, um, instead of doing pattern pieces per chevron, what they've done is they've um, got the whole front of the um, pattern piece, and then they basically ask you to cut where the chevrons are and then add seam allowances yourself so the only thing you need to note is where all the chevrons are there needs to be seam allowances between all of those um, and apart from that everything else was fairly simple I did use Google Translate for some of the bits um, to translate it from German to English just in case um, I missed anything but for the most part it's a, a simple sweatshirt if you've done a hoodie before then you'll be able to do this one yourself as well so, um, so that's my son's one I'll pop up a photo of him wearing that and I also made my husband one. Um, oh, where'd that come from? Let me just cut a bit of loose thread here. So my husband's one is the same, uh, just a bigger size, obviously. And the colours were the forest green as well, a camel colour. And like, I'm not sure what this green is called. I think that might be a teal and this might be the forest green. And I quite like that colour combination. So there you go all from little miss so and so again and i'll pop up a photo of my husband wearing it so this is my go-to um hoodie um in most recent times for my for the men in my family so that's that one um the next thing i made which um wasn't actually on my plans but it was my i had two birthdays this we had two birthdays this year this uh, month february the 20th which was my son gabriel's birthday and um i don't know why i didn't have it in my plans because i normally do like to make them something um to wear something new for their birthday on top of the birthday present which they requested but i made the zane hoodie for him and this is a hoodie pattern by Ellie and Mac Patterns. And I'll pop up the pattern here. Ellie and Mac. And these are all the variations. So you can have um, a normal hoodie with a contrasting bottom bit, contrasting pockets. You can also have like a faux t-shirt on top. You can have it with the hood. And you can also have it without the hood as well, although it's not showing it there. Um, so these are some of the pictures there. So they've got it with the faux sort of t-shirt on top. And um, this goes from a size 6 to 12 months to an age 14, which is great. However, um, Gable, as I say, just, just turned 10. He normally wears age 11 clothes and necks, which I suppose is normal for a 10-year-old. So I obviously took his measurements and he fell into the age 14 measurements. So I made up the age 14 
and there is no room for growth like he'll probably outgrow it in the next couple of months which is a shame because that's the biggest size it goes in this particular pattern it goes into that that's the biggest size it goes and um, but also for an 11 for a 10 year old to be four years um bigger than his um bigger than his age i don't know i don't particularly think he's that tall or that big um compared to a sort of average 10 year old um but there you go i'll pop up a photo now let me show you it first so the hoodie is here sorry he's been wearing this as well which is really lovely when you make things for your family or your friends and you see them wear it all the time i think it just makes things it's just nice that they appreciate it and they like it so this fabric is actually quite special it's a um marvel French terry so if you look at the prints there very very good quality print and it's a French terry so we've got the loop back French terry there and then this um it's not even ribbing it's sweatshirting a rust sweatshirting I believe it's from Pound Fabrics so I picked up sort of the orangey tone from there and then I didn't do the faux t-shirt I just did the straight sweatshirt but um the hood I just um used the contrast for the outside of the hood and then the main um avengers fabric for the hood i think it's actually quite nice he really really likes it i'll pop up a photo of him wearing it very easy to do um you do need the norm your normal sewing machine to do the top stitching on the hood very straightforward though there's nothing you know if you've done a sweatshirt before or a hoodie it's all very straightforward so that was another easy make so that was for my dear gabriel who turned 10 this month and then my daughter sienna also had a birthday three days after so she turned um 12 and i made for her the bakerloo dress she has got two bakerloo dresses already she quite likes that collar and i think it kind of um i quite like the collar on it so let me show you the pattern for the bakerloo dress it's the bakerloo dress by nina lee and it's this pattern here so the variations are you can have a blouse and this is the back and then you can have a dress and that's the back of the dress. Main design features are obviously this lovely big collar with the ruffles, um, gathered ruffled sleeves and then it's just a gathered skirt. At the back you have a centre back seam and a little loop at the um, button loop to, to tie, to close. It goes from a UK size 6 to a UK 20. Measurements are UK 6 bust of 32 waist of 24 all the way up to a uk 20 bust of 46 waist of 38 inches so i think i did the size 12 for my sienna um and because there are waist ties you can cinch it in so it is a little bit big but you can cinch it in at the back as well so it had does it have waist ties waist ties included no it doesn't have waist ties i know it does have waist ties Oh, I thought I just added them myself. Sorry, bear with me. Nope, it doesn't have waist ties, so I just added drafted waist ties myself and added them myself. It does have pockets. Um, the main part of the dress is very easy, so it's just a bodice, front piece and a back piece. Back piece comes in two parts. You've got the sleeves, then you've got the two skirt pieces as well. The main fiddly bit is actually doing the collar i have actually decreased the collar size a little bit i think by an inch all the way around this curved edge here because i found when i first made it the collar was too big and too flappy but everything else remained the same so the collar bit is a bit fiddly because you have to piece together um your bottom collar then your frill then your top collar sew that all together and then flip it inside flip it the right way around making sure that at the corners your frills haven't been caught in the stitching so what i found is i i do it for i don't even baste it i sew it down and then when i turn it out if there's a, a bit of the frill that's caught i just go back inside then i just cut that little bit the the thread that's holding that little bit down so i undo some of those stitches pull out the um the frill and then sew it back down again and i find that's quite a good way of doing it rather than trial and error and you're just there forever trying to get this frill to sit the right way um um, that's it yeah so and it's got bust starts as well here sorry it's got bust starts there um with the sleeve i didn't do so normally you would do i think it's there's an elastic and then you've got the rest of the fabric here as a frill so what i just do is i just do a casing at the wrist and i add elastic there so it's similar to the to be in the buttons lyra long sleeve which i prefer anyway 
and I'll show you the dress here. Oh, and it's sorry, finished by bias binding on the inside. So this is a fabric, a viscose fabric by Lee's Taylor. I got it from my So Haley Jane luxury box a while ago. And to be honest, I was thinking of de-stashing it. Uh, but then my daughter saw the fabric and she said she'd liked she liked it. So I thought I'd make something for her. So that's the collar there. Sorry, it's a bit creased. Um, that's the collar there that's the frill and that's the frill that I'm talking about just getting that part not caught in that corner can be a bit tricky but with time you can and practice you'll be able to pull that out quite nicely and then the cuffs as I say I've just put elasticated casing at the bottom and I've added waist ties as well um, and bias binding I've just used what I had uh, I guess you could make your own bias binding using the fabric but I just couldn't I just could, didn't have the patience to do that and actually it lays really really flat so you can't actually see the bias binding at all which is the best part um and i'll pop up some photos of her wearing it uh, that's that one that's that one and then what else did i get up to okay and then the other i made two other dresses for myself um and i use this pattern here it's the anthea allen anthea blouse anna allen anthea blouse i always get that wrong and this is the pattern here very very popular last year probably will be popular again this summer so it's basically your variations are a blouse and a dress and the main design feature is these big poofy sleeves so not only are they just gathered at the shoulder at the sleeve head it's gathered all the way around the whole of the sleeve and then you've got lovely gathering and the little cuff here which is really really nice so this shape here is very kind of what would you call it like lampshade kind of shape which is really great this is a bias bound neckband a button front and it is quite quite loose fitting and then the variation for the dress is just to lengthen it and flare it out a bit with a waist tie so what i did is i did the blouse I tapered down the waist a little bit and then I added my own gathered skirt and pockets and ties. And, um, yep, I'll show you my versions here. I love this one. Version number one. Look at that sleeve. I mean, this is all the gatherings on the sides. Uh, gathering at the, the back, at the head, sleeve head. Gathering at the back. And then you've got the gathered um, cuffs as well. Um, so that's like a really, really lovely shape, um, bias bound um, neck neckband, and then you've got buttons all the way down here. Just added a gathered skirt. I just used the width of the fabric. I've got ties here, and I've got pockets in here. The pockets I use are Tilly and the Buttons Indigo or Lyra pockets. They're my favourite go-to pockets, and this is made up in a pure linen by from backstitch fabrics and i think it's their raspberry color but it's basically a dusky pink and i really really love this dress actually um i think it's perfect it actually fits me now i mean there's there is a bit of a struggle at the bust area to be fair it actually fits me now but it's quite a it's basically a smock dress but with the ad addition of the tie you can bring it in uh, to give you more definition at the waist if you want to and I think it's a perfect postpartum dress because obviously your body is changing as soon as your baby's born and I think it'll be quite nice just to have this as a transitional piece um, also with the button placket it's great for nursing breastfeeding which I plan to do and I'll pop up some photos of that one and then the second version I made exactly the same but in a different fabric so this is a chambray from First for Fabrics. Oh, there's another dress under there. Oh, I need to choose little buttons here. Sorry, just do the buttons. So exactly the same. You see this gorgeous sleeve. Look at all that gathering all the way around. Sort of the lampshade balloon sleeve there. Exactly the same, bias bound, but in a blue chambray. And I'll pop up some photos of myself wearing that one as well. Um, what's next? The other things that I have made are baby makes, I think. Yep, I think we're down to the baby makes. So I have made, I can't even reach, sorry, my bump is so big, bear with me. Uh. <coughs> I made... Um, 
a pair of dungarees for my almost two-year-old Ava. And the pattern I used was Peekaboo Okie Doki Overalls. And there are quite a lot of dungaree patterns out there. And the reason I was attracted to these is because they look exactly like a ready-to-wear pair, which I like. I like making patterns that look like they're bought from the shop rather than handmade. And this goes from a size three months to 12 years. I didn't know that. Three months to 12 years. And let me show you the line drawings. Oh, no, there's no line drawings. There's no line drawings. Okay, so basically, um, it's got a bib, bib pocket. It's got pockets at the back. It's got a faux zip here. You've got um, buttons at the side there and you've got dungaree clips. You can also make them into shorts, obviously, by just cutting them that way. Um, I made a size three for my daughter. So maybe my children are tall because she's not two yet. She's going to be two in April and I made her an age three and it was perfect. Um, and I made it in a Rifle Paper Company canvas. This pattern here. Um, you've got the front pocket there. Um, this hardware is from Kylie and the Machines and it was actually quite hard to find hardware that was good quality and I mean there's loads on eBay and Etsy that sort of thing but to find sort of the buttons the buckle this bit and an extra pair of buttons um, jeans buttons whatever they're called it was actually quite hard like you couldn't all get it together and I just went for these but these Kylie and the Machine ones are lovely but they are expensive I think they're 10 11 pounds just for this set alone so really that's quite a lot of money to spend on hardware for a pair of toddlers dungarees uh, also Rifle Paper Company this retails at 22 pounds a meter and I used about a meter so really th this pair of dungarees was about 30 pounds in materials alone but anyhow, she loves it and I like it. Um, so you've got the faux sort of zip fly here. Uh, you've got um, a waistband there. I thought it had pockets, doesn't have pockets, but it opens on the side. Oh, you've got pockets at the back. Pockets at the back. And it is just half lined, so it's just the bib that's lined. Um, everything else is unlined. And I'll pop up some photos of her wearing it. Um... So for this pattern, I have used Peekaboo before. So Peekaboo is the same pattern design as the dress that I'm wearing. I did find, however, considering I have been sewing for quite a while, it wasn't actually step by step. There were some steps where they kind of um, leaped a bit. And so there were some bits which I couldn't really understand, but I kind of just made do and just used my own experience and knowledge to finish it off. Um, it wasn't the end of the world. I mean, it, it didn't look that bad at the end, but I just... I like a pattern that is thorough just so it's just nice to follow something that's quite thorough but um, I wouldn't say this is 100% thorough but it's a great pattern all the same um, and the fit of it is really really good and I like the fact as I say it looks like a pair of ready to wear dungarees which is great so I made that and then the last things that I made were um, the um, waves and wild patterns over it alls I'll pop up a photo um, waves and wild are the new made by jack's mum and i've made three little um over it alls this is age three to six months naught to three months oh no i don't even know <laughs> it's either naught to three months or three to six months would i have made it three to six months i don't know naught to three months um so I've made this version here and this is just all fabric from my stash. So we've got some lovely dinosaurs. I've used some prim snaps here in, in a mustard and they open up. And these are half lined. So the lining stops halfway um, and they're really, really cute. Stretchy, lovely to be able to use lots of different prints. And I've got some cuffs here. You do also have the option to put a button placket here, uh, which is nice. It's just extra work. But I think... Um, I don't really mind just undoing this and pulling the whole dungaree, the whole over it all down to do nappy change. I really don't mind that at all. So that's my first one. Second one is raccoons, blue prim snaps, and then blue lining with the blue cuffs at the bottom. So that's another one there. You could just wear that with like a short sleeve um, white vest underneath. <clears throat> and then the third one is the yellow zebra print. I went for black prim snaps and then stripey um, lining and stripey cuffs at the bottom for that one. So this one is still available in Flamingo Fabrics, but in a blue colorway. 
I believe the other two were either from Jelly Fabrics or Little Legs Fabrics, but I can't quite remember it at the moment. Um, so those those are three there, um, and therefore my baby boy who I am expecting at the beginning of May. So that's those ones there, and I think that is it. How long have I been talking for? Thirty four minutes. So that's what I've done for the whole of February. Um, I should have done a February plans, but at the moment, at this moment in time. I don't really have plans as such, so it's kind of whatever I fancy um, pattern-wise that I have already. And I'm trying not to buy any fabric at the moment because I do have a big stash and just shopping in my stash has been quite nice. Um, although for March, I do have some plans for March because I'm participating in a couple of challenges. Um, and what I have been doing, um, because I have been quite tired with the baby, um, I have been batch cutting projects and I find that that's quite good uh, because then I have projects ready to go as and when I feel the need to sew. So that's kind of um, sped up my productivity as well. So hopefully you enjoyed that. That was February roundup of the month. I will be having my March plans out um, in a couple of days, hopefully. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for subscribing. For all the comments below, I love uh, it, when you guys reach out to me. Please do also follow me on Instagram and my social threads. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.